Hello sewing students, this is Miss Amy coming to you from my Altadena sewing studio. Boy, what a crazy situation we're in right now. But I have a really fun sewing project for you to work on this week. We're going to make this house-shaped decor pillow. It has color contrasting roof, body, windows, and doors. We're going to put the Polar Fleece Stuffed Animal Project on hold because I want you to work on a project where you can use materials from home. I specifically created this project so that you could use, create, make it at home using materials you have on hand. In today's lesson, we're going to learn three steps. The first step is drafting a pattern. The second step is cutting out your fabric. And I want you to make sure that you iron your fabric first before you cut it out. And the third step is preparing the windows and doors. The rest of the project I will show you on your video for next week. And please don't forget to include pictures of your house pillow when you're finished after next week so that I can see how you all did. All right, I'm ready to go. Let's start. Sewing students, these are all the materials that you'll need for this project. It's a good idea to get the materials ready now so that you'll have them as we go through each step. The first thing you'll need is some polyfill. It's a polyester stuffing that you use to stuff stuffed animals or pillows. You'll need something that'll fluff up the pillow. If you don't have polyfill, then you'll need to have cotton balls. Um, you can grab some cotton balls, tear them up. You could even take a dish towel, um, some old dish towels, tear them up. Anything that you could stuff the pillow with. You'll also need some scraps of fabric. Um, I had this leftover plaid woven fabric. I have some old jeans that I'm going to use. Uh, if you had an old sheet or a pillowcase, that would work great. Um, if you have leftover fabric from your pajama pant project um, or an old shirt of your father's maybe, um, a camp shirt would be good. I also have felt here. I'm going to use this for my doors and windows. If you don't have felt, you could just use your regular fabric. That's fine. You're going to need some embroidery thread. It's thicker than sewing thread. If you don't have embroidery thread, you could just use regular thread. Uh, you'll need a needle, a so hand sewing needle. For the embroidery thread, you'll need an extra large sewing needle to fit the thread through. You'll need your um, thread scissors, your fabric scissors, paper scissors, a pencil, a ruler, pins, and then lastly you'll need some paper. So I have this leftover pattern paper scraps that I'm going to use, but you might not have that at home. But I'm hoping that you have some butcher paper or shipping paper. Uh, even Christmas wrapping paper, the white side of it, would work great for making a pattern. Uh, some people even use cereal boxes. If you want to cut up an old cereal box, use the, um, the back side of the cereal box. That works well. So that's what we need for the project. And I'm going to start showing you the next step. Our first step is to draft our pattern. There's four pattern pieces. The body, the roof, the window, and the door. This is a new skill for everyone. You're going to learn how to draft a pattern. These are really basic, easy shapes, so it should be um, relatively easy for you guys. Everyone knows what a grain line is. Every pattern has a grain line. I'm pointing to them right now. And they all have a label. So that's something that you always have to do, is always label your patterns. So I'm going to walk you through it right now. We're going to draw um, the draft the body for the house first. So the body of the house is 8 inches wide by 8.5 inches tall. So I'm going to use my ruler and my pencil, and I have my first scrap paper. It's a little raggedy because it's a little leftover piece of paper that I have. So I'm measuring out my 8 inches. I like to draw a little perpendicular line at the end of each to help show me where I am. I'm going to lay my ruler down. Now I'm going to draw an 8 and a half tall line. And I'll lay my ruler against the next line. Now I'm going to do 8 because I'm 8 inches wide and I'm just going to make sure that I'm 8 inches all the way across so I'm going to draw a little, I'm going to measure from this line over here this first vertical line and draw in dots so that I can make sure that I'm drawing a parallel 8 inch line 
So there's my house. Now I just add my grain lines. I always I like to put the grain lines off to the side. They need to have an arrow at each end. The grain line should be parallel to this vertical line here. That's going to tell us how to place this pattern piece on our fabric. And then I'm going to make a label. My label is going to say my name, Amy. What the pattern is, it's the house pillow. It's going to say what pattern piece it is, the body. It's also going to tell me the size of it, 8 inches by 8 and a half inches. And how many pieces to cut? Cut two. We need to cut two pieces, front and back. And then I draw a square around it and cut it out. So that's our first pattern piece. So all pattern pieces have a grain line and a label. We're not, there's no notches on this pattern piece. It's a very simple square. Um, you just go ahead and cut it out. So I'm not going to finish cutting because I think you guys know how to do that. So I'm going to go ahead and show you how to do the roof now. So the roof is 8 inches wide. So I'm going to draw a base of 8 inches. And it's 6 and 3 quarter inches tall. So to do that, I'm going to make a little mark at 4 inches. So I have an 8 inch line with a mark at 4 inches. And then at that 4 inch line, I'm going to draw a vertical line that's 6 and 3 quarter inches tall. So now all I have to do is connect the base of my 8 inch line with my 6 and 3 quarter inch line at the top, and that gives me that perfect triangle. This line is going to be my grain line, so I'm just going to add arrows and write in my label. Amy, house pillow. So we always want to have a label on every piece because if you lose it, you won't know what it's for. And I'm putting the 6 bucks, 0.75 by 8 inches, and I'm going to cut two pieces and draw my box around it. So that's our roof. Then you cut that out. And the last two pieces, the window and the door, the door is two and a half by four and a half. So I'm going to go ahead and draw my four and a half height and my two and a half width. And I'm using these little perpendicular lines here to help me stay straight. I'm going to go up here to four and a half. Let's make sure it's two and a half. Still two and a half. Draw in my grain line parallel to my vertical line and my label. And I put the um, what it is, the door and the size. And this is only cut one because I only need one door. So then you go ahead and cut that out. And then lastly, the window. The window is two inches by two inches. It's quite small. I'm, just, I'm using my two inch clear graphic ruler. You'll probably be using just a regular ruler at home unless you have this. And I'm drawing in my grain line and again my label. And the label always goes in the center. And the grain line should extend the length of the pattern, leaving like a half inch from the top and the bottom. And the window is cut two, because we're going to need two windows. So there's my window, window and door. Cut them out, and you'll have your four pieces. And that's it for our first. Students, this is our second step. We're going to cut out our pattern from our fabric. You're going to need your pins. If you have some pattern weights, you can use those. You'll need your fabric scissor, your fabric, and we're going to cut out the body of the house first. Remember, when you lay out your fabric, we always want to put right sides together. So find the right side of your fabric and match them up and fold it on the length grain. So your selvage edge should be parallel to the grain line on your fabric. So I'm going to lay my grain line parallel to my selvage edge. My selvage edge is gone, but my stripe is telling me where my selvage edge is. 
So the vertical stripe tells me where to pl place it. So I'm just gonna make sure that I have two layers of fabric. I'm gonna use my a couple of my pattern weights and you guys don't need very many pins, probably just like two or probably four pins, five pins, one for each corner and one for the center. Once it's pinned and the weights are in place, then you just go ahead and start cutting it out right along the edge of the pattern. So when I was making the pattern, I didn't explain to you the reason why it's important to make a pattern. Some of you might be saying, I could just measure my eight by eight and a half inch square on my fabric and not have to have a pattern. But it's important to have a pattern because then you can make the same thing over and over again and you don't have to refigure what the size is. So having a pattern comes in handy. So that's it. So I just laid that out, take off my pins, and I have the body done. So now we're going to cut out the roof. We have four pieces. We did the body. We're going to do the roof and at the end we'll do the door and the window. So I'm using this scrap of fabric from a pair of jeans and I just cut the legs off and I laid them right sides together. I know my grain line, I can see my grain line in the jeans, is the length, it's this length of the leg and I'm just matching my base up onto it and I'm putting down a pattern weight and a couple of pins. If you don't have pattern weights, you'll probably need four pins, one for each corner and one for the center. You don't need to over pin. And then you go ahead and just cut around all the edges, right up against the fabric. And that's your second piece. And now we'll do the door. Finish the roof and the body. Um, I'm using this felt fabric for my windows and my door. So I need two windows, so I folded my felt in half. Felt doesn't have a grain line, so I don't need to worry about where the selvage edge is or the grain line. It's not a woven fabric. So I'm going to pin my window and cut it out. And um, after I'm done cutting my window, I'm going to do the same thing with my door. I'm going to finish cutting that out later. I'm going to show you how to lay out the door. This is only one layer. I don't need two doors. I only need one door, so I'm not going to fold it in half. I'm just going to lay it on one layer. And you probably need like two pins, one, two, or three pins. Uh, you could even push, if you're using felt, you could push it up to the edge of the fabric. I didn't do that with the windows because that's a perfect straight edge. And save yourself cutting those edges right there. So just cut right on those edges. And now your door's done. So we're finished with the cutting step. I have one door, two windows, and um, once I finish cutting this on my own, I'll have my roof, my two roofs, and um, two bodies. Today's video, or today's lesson, is to embroider the doorknob and the crosses on the windows. I like the embroidery thread because it's thicker and it shows up better, as you can see. If you don't have embroidery thread, just use regular sewing thread and double it up so you'll have two layers like this. Um, with the embroidery thread, we only need one layer. So, And I'm using a larger embroidery needle too. It has a bigger um, eye to fit the thread through. So I take the thread and I fold it like this and then I use my fingers to tighten it up against the edge of the needle and then I slide it off and it gets skinnier and skinnier as it goes to the end and then I push it into the um, into the eye of the needle like this and it's kind of tricky um, sometimes it works for me sometimes it doesn't, I'm going to try it again you got to get it really thin and then you push really hard to squeeze that thread through the needle and once you start getting it some of it then hopefully you can get all of the threads that's the way I do it you could just lick the end of it and pull it through that way this is the way I like to do it let's get them all through 
Well, I only got a couple of them through. So, if you can't do it that way, you can put them in this way too. So I had better luck doing it that way. So I'm just gonna have a tail that's like five inches long, four inches long, and I'm gonna make a knot at the bottom. I roll it over my finger and close and make a knot like that. You can do that or you can just tie a knot. And then I'm just gonna eyeball where I want my doorknob to be. I want it to be like somewhere right here. You know, if you wanna draw a dot, you can. I'm gonna start from underneath because I want my knot to be hidden. And I'm just gonna go in and out and make a small circle. So you can be creative, use your own imagination, how you want your doorknob to look. Um, I just did two stitches, I made like a little cross. And now I'm gonna go back and make another diagonal. And I'll probably go through one more time because I like the doorknob to be pronounced. So that's probably about enough times. If you're using regular thread, sewing thread, you'll probably need to go through more. Now on the back side, I'm just gonna take a, a little bit of the um, felt. I don't want it to show on that side to make a knot. I pull it through and then I go through the loop like that and make a knot. I'm gonna just go through again, just to tie it off so that it doesn't come undone. So once I'm done doing that, then I just clip it with my scissors and I have my doorknob. So that's the doorknob. For the windows, we're gonna make crosses. So again, you need to tie another knot. And again, I'm gonna eyeball. I'm just gonna start in the center at the bottom and I'm gonna go in and out. I'm gonna make probably like quarter inch uh, stitches. So I went, now I'm gonna go straight up next to where I um, went down, and then I'm gonna go down again a quarter inch away. And then I'm gonna go up again, right where I left off on that last st stitch, and then down again a quarter of an inch away. So I'm making a little track. And again, I'm gonna put my needle up through and down again about a quarter inch away and underneath it looks like that so I'm going up next to it and then now I'm jumping a quarter inch away so underneath I can't see anything because I'm putting all the stitches in on the top and then you're gonna do it again to make the other cross so once you've finished going that way, then you're gonna, I'm not even gonna tie off my thread. I'm just gonna go right up over to my other side like that and go up and down to save time and go all the way across. And you're gonna do the same thing, whoops. I went up through the same hole. You don't wanna do that. Then you're gonna do the same thing on the other window. You're gonna make the two embroidered lines up and down, straight across. So I'm, you're gonna just keep going all the way across, tie it off, and then you'll have your finished. When it's finished, it's going to look like this. And that's it for today's lesson. Hey students, so that's our lesson for today. I showed you the three first steps to creating your house-shaped decor pillow. I hope you had fun. I'll show you how to actually sew it and stuff it and finish it next week. So stay tuned.